Good morning. My name is Professor Keto Gabriel Moti. I will be facilitating for 101, a course offered by the Department of Public Administration. The title of the course is Introduction to Public Administration 1. Today, we will take the first topic, which is which is the, the, the nature and meaning of public administration. Our objectives in this lesson, first lesson, is that at the end you should be able to understand the meaning of the word public and administration and generally we will now give other definitions of public administration. Secondly, we will also discuss the nature of the discipline public administration. What is therefore public administration? In simple terms, in simple terms, the yeah, the word public administration comprises of all those actions carried out by government to care for its people or manage its affairs. But before we go into a full definition of the word public administration, let us look at the interpretation of the concept public administration. It is made up of two key words, public and administration. The word public refers to people of a definite territory or state like Nigeria. As the will of the people of a state is represented by the government, the word public also connotes a specialized meaning that is governmental. Therefore, when government carries out any act of administration, we call it public administration. Those acts carried out by individuals in their own capacity are referred to private as private administration. The word administration was derived from two Latin words, ad and administre, meaning to administer or to serve or to manage. In simple language, administration means the management of affairs or looking after people. It is a management process that is present in all kinds of organization, from our household to those complex governmental organizations. So, whenever two or more people cooperate to accomplish a common purpose, an administrative activity is assumed to have been involved. That is to say that all group of activities involve some form of administration. In other words, what we have 
tried to achieve here is when we talk about administration, we are referring to giving of service. So, government is involved in giving of service to the public, and that is what public administration stands for governmental service to the generality of the people within the territory of that government. Let us look at some other definitions of public administration from scholars. These are classical definitions of public administration. The first is from Luther Golick. He said, administration has to do with getting things done. So, if we are able to get things done, we are involving in administration. He also said that public administration is the science of administration, which has to do with government. Which has to do with government. And this concerns itself primarily with the executive branch of government. Though there are obviously problems in connection with the legislature and judicial branches. In other words, Golik is saying that public administration has to do with getting things done, and that branch of government that gets things done is the executive. But it is not only the executive that gets things done. The other branches of government, like the legislature and the judiciary, also get things done. But the most visible is the executive. That is why public administration sometimes relates more to the executive branch of government. Getting things done is also a part of politics. Because in politics, we are inquiring into the best means whereby the will of the people can be organized so that policies will be formulated and public administration is the carrying out of these policies or bringing out these policies into operation. The second definition is given by Herbert A. Simon. Herbert A. Simon says public administration is meant to be understood in a common usage. This common usage is that it refers to the activities of the executive branches of government whether at the state level, national level, or local government levels. If we carefully look at this definition, it reveals to us that public administration concerns itself with mostly the executive branch of government. Why the sole aim is the execution of the policies of the state. So, public administration exists in government to carry out or execute or implement the policies of the states. These definitions contain substantial truths, although they lack some aspects which are essential to understanding the meaning of public administration in a broader sense. So, let us go further by looking at some other meaning of public administration. Classically, that is, in the past, we used to look at public administration in a narrow sense, in a restricted sense, only limited to the executive activities of the government, which is just a fraction of the greater or broader responsibility of the modern state. Today, 
in any modern state, the government, the government is supposed to act in each and every sphere. That is why in most developing countries like Asia, Africa, and Latin America, government is expected to perform the duties of a mother, the nurse, and not just of a policeman who maintains law and order. In other words, in this environments, public administration is expected to carry on so many activities and that is why in most cases we blame government if certain things which even the citizens are expected to carry out are not done are blamed on government. Government, like we said, is expected to serve the citizens and serving the citizen means providing all types of social, economic, and utility services for the development of the people. So, the idea that public administration is basically the executive administrative side of government can be better examined in the light of the impossibility of differentiating between the three functions of government in a conclusive manner. This is because the new emphasis is that administration effectively exercises both legislative, legislative and executive functions as well. Therefore, when we talk of public administration, we should talk of it as relating to all the three branches of government, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. So, our definition of public administration, which is mainly to offer service to the people, means that both the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary are involved in this provision of services to the people. Let us look at the second segment of our discussion today, the second objective of our lecture, the nature of public administration. Recall that we advance the issue that public administration does not only refer to the executive alone, but also the legislature and the judiciary. And I hope this has been made clear and you have followed our previous discussion. Regarding the nature of public administration, that is, what actually constitutes the scope of public administration. Two views are prevalent here. The two views are the managerial view and the integral view. Let us look at the managerial view first. This is a view that is associated with some experts in public administration and organization. These include Luther Golick, Henry Fayot, and Mason. They belong to what we call the managerial school of thought. What is this managerial school of thought? According to this view, they look at public administration as comprising all the activities of only those persons who are engaged in managerial functions in an administrative setup. Let me repeat that again. According to this view, the managerial view of public administration, it is restricted to the activities of only those persons engaged in the performance of managerial functions in an administrative setup. And what are 
managerial functions. We will look at that later. But here, the people who we are looking at are like the chief executive, the governors, the president, local government chairman, and those who may have been ministers or commissioners or permanent secretaries. These are the people that perform managerial functions. So according to this view, public administration is restricted to the activities of these functionaries of government. However, public administration is carried out by other people, such as clerks, messengers, uh, office attendants, and so on and so forth. This view, therefore, excludes these people from the study of public administration. The managerial views that we talked about we are propounded by Luther Golick in 1937. These are summed up in one acronym or one word, which is Port Cook. Port Cook stands for P, planning, O, organizing. S. Staffing. D. Directing. C. O. Coordinating. R. Reporting. And B. Budget. I hope you are following the meaning of Postcode. Postcode is an acronym. It stands for managerial functions or techniques, which are P, planning, O, organizing, S, staffing, D, directing, C, O, coordinating, R, reporting, and B, budget. So, if you go to any administrative setup, you will find that government plans its activities, it organizes its activities by having a structure, it brings in staff or personnel to man those structures and positions, people who come in as staff or personnel are given directives on what to do. And because people work in different departments in a, an administrative setup, there is coordination of their activities. These activities, when they are carried out, are reported to the chief executive. But before you can do all this, there must be the provision of resources both material, financial, and human. And this is done through the process of budgeting. These are the managerial techniques or functions that the managerial view of public administration refers to because these activities are carried out by those who hold managerial functions in an administrative setup. In addition, Simon Smithberg and Thompson also observed that the term administration can be used in a narrow sense. And this narrow sense is similar to what we have already discussed. It looks at administrative issues relating to the managerial function. So, in your own ways, try and look at the word 
planning, organizing, staffing, directing, coordinating, reporting, and budgeting. And look at your own organization In your own words, look at the words planning, organizing, staffing, directing, coordinating, Reporting and budgeting. And try to find out who performs such a function or such functions in your own organization. You will discover that these are mostly carried out by those who are in the managerial cadre of the administrative sector. The second view of public administration is what we call the integral view. This view is broader, that is wider than the managerial view. It holds that Public administration is the sum total of all activities which are undertaken to achieve the desired goals of an organization. Let me repeat that. The integral view holds that public administration is the sum total of all activities which are undertaken to achieve the desired goals of an administration. In this case, it goes beyond managerial functions as we discussed in the managerial view. It includes functions of people like clerks, messengers, tapists, cleaners, and so on and so forth. Because all these are activities within an administrative setup. This view was enunciated by people or writers like L. D. White in 1955 when he defined public administration as consisting of all those operations having for their purpose the fulfillment and enforcement of public policy. So, when the clerk is involved in his activities, when the messenger is involved in his activities, when all other junior staff are involved in their activities, including the managers, all these activities and operations put together fulfill the purpose of enforcement of public policy and provide services to the people. This definition or the integral view also embraces other operations that are carried out in administration. These include military activities, civil affairs activities, activities of the courts, the judiciary, activities that are carried out at the field offices of government, Activities as carried out by the police, maintaining law and order, education where our children are taught, health where we receive facilities for looking after our health, construction of public work like roads and other infrastructure, social security and many other areas. So all these activities put together come under public administration and they are what we refer to as the integral view. Therefore, 
we will realize from our discussion that whereas the managerial view gives us a narrow concept of the scope and nature of public administration and limits it to managerial functions and technique, the integral view explains to us that public administration is a wide discipline and the subject matter covers the entire area of all activities of government in the discipline of public administration. Let us look at the merits and the demerits of this two views. You will discover that the managerial view and the integral view of the nature or scope of public administration have their merits and demerits. I will want you, as part of your assignment, to go and find out what are the merits what are the merits merits of the managerial view, the demerits of the managerial view, the merits of the integral view, and the merits of the integral view, so that you will be ready with your answers in the next class, next week, when we come, we will look at them before we proceed to our next lecture. In summary, today we have discussed the meaning of public administration. We have been able to agree and understand that Public administration consists of two key words, public and administration. Public refers to the total people existing within a particular governmental territory. And it also refers to governmental activity. Administration refers to giving service or helping and therefore public administration means giving service to the general public. We also examine some important definition as given by some eminent scholars and writers in this discipline. We looked at the nature of public administration and we said there are two views to the nature of public administration the managerial view and the integral view. The managerial view regards public administration as a narrow discipline dealing with only those managerial functions which include planning, organizing, staffing, directing, coordinating, reporting, and budgeting, which we noted in our lesson refers to the acronym called POTSCO. The other view, the integral view, looks at public administration or the nature of public administration in a broader context and includes all the activities carried out by all agencies of government to provide service to the people. And we also recognized in this lecture that the three organs or arm of government form an integral part of the study and practice of public administration, which is the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. As we end our session today, as we end our session today, let me remind you that when we come, we will be looking at the. I will be expecting you to discuss the merits and demerits, the merits, the merits, 
the merits of both the managerial and integral view of public admin on elements. However, our next topic that we'll be dealing with will be differences and similarities between public and private administration.